Good morning. Thank you for joining us today on this uh, summer series for our library presentations. So today's, so this morning's presentation is on our electronic books. Uh, this presentation will be an introduction to uh, some of the platforms we offer through the DACC library. Uh, it will not be that in depth. Uh, um, and I also won't be covering all our platforms since we have several. So we would always start from our library's homepage. This is a picture of that with the URL up on top. And if you can notice the big blue arrow I have inserted, you will see uh, several tabs that are located around the middle range of our homepage. And the eBooks tab is where you would click on to see all the eBook platforms that we offer. When you do so, I couldn't capture the entire list, but you will see something similar to this. All our different platforms and vendors are listed here and their titles are clickable. So whichever one you would uh, like to visit, you would move your mouse over and click on its title to then proceed to that platform. And there is a brief description next to each one. So in this presentation, these are the, the specific ebook platforms that I will discuss. First one is EBSCO, very popular vendor that we have many resources from. Uh, a website called Project Gutenberg. And then our last platform is the Gale platform. Of course, during the conversation, um, during the presentation, if you find something of interest that you would like to discuss further or to be shown more in depth, there's the email to reach out to us and we'd be glad to assist you at a later time. So the eBooks that the DACC library subscribes to uh, especially off campus, our users need to authenticate themselves before accessing them. So when you do so, after clicking on any of the ebook platforms that I mentioned listed in the previous couple of slides, you will then get a page like this that will ask you to authenticate yourself. This is where you would input your NMSU credentials and proceed. EBSCO is a very popular uh, library vendor, and we have many different resources uh, from them, a lot of databases, and also eBooks. So I didn't list, nor will I talk about all the different eBooks uh, that they have. I will just show you one because they are all very similar. And in general, the principles apply for EBSCO. And if you're familiar with some of our databases, they look practically identical. Uh, you have the ubiquitous search box there in the middle where you would type in your keywords and then hit search. And uh, you also have a browse by category section uh, below on the left-hand side and some highlighted eBooks they've selected uh, with their cover, with their covers as a uh, more visual representation and, and uh, to appeal your interest. So eBooks can be accessed and used for a lot of reasons. Sometimes some students, especially those that are not familiar with them, think uh, or don't know that you could actually access eBooks for just specific information. You don't have to read it entirely. Uh, so some of the skills we teach uh, is to zoom in in the area of the ebook that is most applicable for your research needs. And one of the ways to do that is to look at the table of contents. Most books have table of contents. They 
it's they lay out basically how the book is organized and into sections and by reading the chapters for example you should get a better idea of what's available in that area a step further than that in ebooks is that these table of contents are actually linkable so as you read the table of contents which is the picture on the left hand side and you select any of those links you would be taken immediately to that section of the book so i wanted to stress this uh feature and um learned behavior for using ebooks that makes it that much more uh, efficient when researching for what we're needing information on <clears throat> excuse me so the picture on the right is an example of one of the links that I clicked on from the table of contents. And you can see uh, it too is broken down even further for more uh, sections and subsections, subsections within that chapter, for example, and then the text or the actual page on the further right hand side of that image. Another neat feature within uh, ebooks is the ability to search even further than let's say the table of contents or the index or key terms that you're looking for. They have this search within, that's what it's called in EBSCO, where you would type in whatever keyword you're searching information on uh, and it will show you if it appears at all in the book, the number of results on the left-hand side, for example, and where, what pages uh, that keyword appeared in. So in this example, I typed in the word capital. This is, uh, I think, I believe a business book that I used as the example in the previous slide. And so you should see after I typed in capital, you, we have three uh, matches, three different pages where that term appeared. So again, this facilitates the use of the ebook to narrow down uh, and search for keywords that we're seeking information on. And on the right hand side is the example of one of those matches that came up under the search. So search within, again, a very neat and efficient way to use electronic books. So there are a lot of tools that I'm not gonna be able to uh, talk about in this presentation how to save, how to print, how to email, how to download. Uh, but one of, the one, one of the things that I did want to mention at least was this exporting. So if you have a subscription or access to uh, a cloud service, in this case, specifically Google Drive, when you access an ebook, you could save a section of that book, that ebook to that drive. So in this example, um, it gives you uh, that option to do so. Keep in mind the limits, though, in EBSCO, they definitely have these limits. They, all, they will only allow you to save uh, a certain amount of the book. And in this case, it is 100 pages. So I wanted to highlight this uh, feature for EBSCO eBooks. The next source I want to briefly talk about <clears throat> is a website called Project Gutenberg. It's been in existence now for quite a number of years. Uh, primarily, they offer access to electronic books of many classical or otherwise known books that whose um, copyright has expired. So they are now freely available in the public domain. Uh, so this is the website address, the URL listed above that you could access. And uh, this is a picture of their homepage. It is not very uh, difficult to find. You could also Google it. Uh, it's, very, uh, it's a very popular web source. There is a brief welcome and description there. They even have a scan picture. I forgot what that's called, but uh, so you could even uh, use it on your mobile device. And when you search for a, a book, most likely you'll get something similar to this. Notice these are the different 
types of formats that it's available to you. Uh, you can go from just plain text on the website to some of these other more uh, personal formats and devices. So that is Project Gutenberg. And the last source I'm going to speak about is our other more popular vendor that we have in the library, and that is Gale. This is a picture of Gale eBooks and their homepage. It looks a little different than the EBSCO. Uh, and actually, that's going to be a common theme throughout their eBook platform. But essentially, once you get familiar with using, searching, et cetera, using eBooks, uh, many of those skills are easily transferable. So they just, the, the tools, for example, may just have a different name and or be located in a different area of the page, but essentially many of the functions are the same. One of the things I like about Gale is this ability to look at the lists of uh, resources they reference. For example, in this particular platform, this is a picture of the list of titles they allow. So again, um, that may be something uh, some of our users may want to pay attention to, especially if it's a student that has <clears throat> an assignment and a requirement of the types or number of resources to use. If they're unsure if whether or not this platform would fulfill that, they could we can help them look at this list and, and further uh, see, if it, see if it does. List of titles. So here's an example of a basic search. I typed in the name of an author. And you can see below her name are the number of results that I got from searching that. And below that is a picture of, I think, the first result. Um, so if you remember the homepage of Gale, there was also a browse the categories and they also had pictures of book covers that you could browse, but you could definitely also search for keywords, titles, authors, uh, any of those would work. And uh, if successful, you will get a list of results. To further narrow the result, if you wish, you can then use some of the filters that you would can see now on the right hand side of this image. They have some of those filters that you could then further <clears throat> narrow down, for example, by document type, publication titles, language, content level. Gale um, categorizes many of their ebooks in this platform with a content level, which basically is like a reading level. So I believe it's from one to five that distinguishes these levels. So you could even further uh, narrow your results using that. And underneath those filters, there are a couple more um, things you can use to narrow your results. If you check mark those boxes, you could then further narrow your results with those eBooks that contain images and or videos. A brief introduction to some of the basic searching capabilities within Gale eBooks and some of the filters that are most commonly uh, used. And when you then access one of these eBooks, this is the top portion of the page that you will get. Um, you see there uh, the, the name of the source, the publisher, what kind of document type it is, how many pages, the, the reading level or the content level, the editor, the, the date, and the title. Underneath the big uh, dark line then, you, you will see the further functions of uh, translation, changing the font size. Gale allows uh, reading capabilities to you, uh, an oral presentation of the material. Uh, you can click on that button and listen to the uh, information. And then on the right corner, 
uh, some of the more common tools, uh, saving or downloading uh, to the, I believe it's Google Drive or to the cloud. You can email or print. So uh, uh, a brief introduction to some, uh, to some more basic uh, features within an actual ebook. A couple more uh, at the bottom of that uh, ebook are uh, these these couple of uh, features that allow you to cite the source. So here's an example. I didn't change it. It's MLA, but you see next to those next to that a couple of more options there as well. APA and then Chicago. If you click on those in the citation, which is right in that big white box would change. And uh, so it provides you with a citation of the material. And then further below that, more options to export that ebook and or its uh, content to some of those other uh, services as you can see there, easy bid ref, ref works, the cloud, etc. So some of the features found within ebooks there. What I like about Gale is this ability as you're searching uh, and the option to see uh, the search in a more graphic manner, in this case, a visualization wheel. So if you remember, my search was of Judy Bloom, a uh, common, uh, a very popular children's author. Uh, if, if you click the visualization wheel, then it will give you this image there that kind of expands and allows you to see what other relevant subjects are available. So again, a very visual approach to furthering uh, your search within the ebook platform. And then on the right hand side are listed uh, a couple of the accessibility tools that are uh, available. Uh, the translation, the font size and the listening, uh, some of uh, all of which I previously mentioned in the other slide. But again, uh, tools that are there to enhance the user experience and uh, personalize it to their liking. <clears throat> so we have more ebook platforms, but again, for this presentation, I only narrowed it down to those three. But I wanted to take now time to discuss this uh, concept of reading the ebook versus downloading. Uh, so without trying to confuse too many of you, when you access the ebook platform and you're searching while you're still in the session and you're accessing and clicking on ebooks, you're essentially reading the eBooks online. And as long as you don't close the browser, you can do that um, primarily uh, problem free. If you wanted to access these, let's say you were searching for eBooks, but you didn't want to spend the time to read them right then, you were just searching for them and you were wishing to how, somehow save them for a later time, then you would then be wanting to consider downloading them. And there's a difference between how EBSCO requires you to download their eBooks versus how Gale. Uh, with Gale is not uh, really uh, much uh, trouble. Uh, you would follow some of those downloading uh, tools and you should be able to access them when you want to later. With EBSCO though, there are a couple of things you must do in order to do that, in order to download, and here are some of them. <clears throat> so with EBSCO eBooks, you must first create an Adobe ID account, and you would then go to this website, adobe.com, and create this free account. This is required for you to download EBSCO eBooks. Once you have done so, you would then download Adobe Digital Edition. This is the website that would allow you to then further proceed in this process. 
Finally, within EBSCO itself, you would then create an account so that when you're using and searching the EBSCO platform, in this case, the ebook, when you have an account and you sign in, you would then be able to personalize your searches, save your searches, and keep track of the ebook downloads. So you would then uh, proceed with creating this account as well. So I know several steps. Again, uh, we will be readily available to help you to create this. Again, this is only if you wish to download, if you wish to use your mobile devices to access and read the eBooks. Uh, this is the further steps that you need to take to do so with EBSCO products. So in summary, our eBooks are subscription-based resources that are offered through the DACC library for our users. You must start at our library homepage, select the eBook tab, authenticate because you are off campus with your NMSU credentials, and then proceed with either accessing online immediately uh, with the eBooks or uh, doing some of the uh, further steps that I aforementioned on downloading if it's EBSCO, uh, not necessarily if it's Gale. Uh, again, uh, this is a general introduction to some of our resources we offer at DECC Library regarding the eBooks, and there are many more. Um, let us know how we can help you, uh, especially if you're an instructor wishing to incorporate some of these electronic resources into your classes or for your students. Thank you for joining us. Um, please join us next week for our last presentation, a week from today, July 30th. And that presentation will be focusing on career informations.